Thanks, Weisu. Well, Hong Kong's zero COVID policy pushing its Cathay Pacific to use cash to entice staff to fly. The move could be the airline's last ditch attempt to retain employees and to encourage pilots to fly under strict quarantine measures. It is offering captains a bonus of up to 3,700 US dollars to fly four or more so called closed loops. That's a route where crew could spend more than a month either in the air or isolating at a hotel before returning home. The arrangement allows crews to sidestep the territory's quarantine rules. And the airline has come under fire in Hong Kong after two flight attendants who tested positive for Omicron breached the city's mandate. They were accused of sparking a local outbreak. Cafe Pacific is grappling with reduced flight schedules and declining revenues as it tries to navigate Hong Kong's zero-COVID policy that's led to a wave of resignations. And the aviation sector isn't alone. The government's tough stance on is affecting Hong Kong's status as a financial hub. Some Western companies are reportedly considering it a hardship post as fewer people are willing to replace those leaving. Immigration data shows 15,000 overseas professionals and investors were admitted to Hong Kong last year under its general employment scheme. That's down almost two-thirds from 41,000 in 2019. In a survey last this month, the British Chamber of Commerce found 70% of respondents faced difficulties in hiring staff due to the city's quarantine curbs. And for more, Tommy Wu, lead economist at Oxford Economics, joins us now. Tommy, could we get a clearer picture of the employment situation in Hong Kong? So foreign companies are saying that they can't attract overseas talent, but local unemployment has been dropping. Uh, indeed, uh, the improvement in the uh, domestic labor market market uh, has mainly to do with uh, an improvement in sectors that were uh, affected by the pandemic the most, uh, including sectors such as uh, retail, uh, restaurants, and uh, personal services. Um, at least that's uh, before you know uh, the most uh, recent rounds of uh, tightening uh, in, in in January. So uh, in terms of other sectors such as finance, uh, we haven't really seen much of a pickup in employment uh, in the past uh, year or so. So I guess in some, to some extent that reflects the fact that. Um, you know, expats are uh, perhaps not coming or not willing to come. And also um, that also means, uh, you know, perhaps some companies are having difficulties to find uh, talents. And adding to that, actually, uh, some of the uh, local residents uh, have also ch chosen to migrate elsewhere. So that also adds to the issue here. Yeah, so adding on to that point, uh, how great is the risk of Hong Kong facing a brain drain then, especially as it tries to, you know, retain its status as a global financial hub post-pandemic? Plus, what does this mean for competitors like uh, Singapore and Dubai, which are said to be drawing these executives? Well, I think the risk to Hong Kong is actually quite substantial, um, uh, especially if um, the current uh, restrictions are going to last for uh, longer, and 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 the, with the delay of uh, reopening uh, of Hong Kong's borders with uh, the international community, you know, the longer it takes to reopen, uh, the more the, this this kind of risk uh, is building up. And as you have mentioned, uh, it is actually benefiting. Uh, 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 other uh, international business and financial hubs in the region, including Singapore, uh, Singapore and Dubai. Um, actually, and also if we look at, say, some of the numbers, um, last year, uh, the number of regional headquarters in Hong Kong uh, had actually declined, uh, mainly because of uh, a decline in uh, headquarters uh, of American and European and Japanese companies, uh, although some of that uh, has been offset by an increase in, in Chinese companies' headquarters in Hong Kong. But, uh, but certainly um, uh, the, the, the ongoing uh, you know, borders restrictions and also strict quarantine restrictions uh, are affecting uh, companies' decisions to whether they, they should keep their key roles and also key functionalities in Hong Kong or elsewhere. And, and Tommy, you know, those reports of expats live, leaving in droves because of the, the strict policies and quarantine, uh, what has the impact been on Hong Kong so far, say, you know, in terms of residential rents, uh, retail spending as well? well I think uh, 
most of the impact uh, in terms of, say, restaurants or rent right now uh, are mostly contained in areas that are traditionally like expats area where areas where expats live and uh, and you know spend basically. Um, so so uh, by and large, because the the uh, the retail and also the property markets uh, are mainly driven by uh, you know domestic uh, residents and also uh, in, uh, inbound tourism, uh, especially mainland uh, like those coming from mainland China uh, to 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 a large extent. So uh, the the fact that uh, there are less expats in in Hong Kong, it's affecting some areas, but uh, by and large, the, in aggregate terms, it's not really affecting much. But what I'm worrying about is uh, over the long term, because this could have some long term implications. Uh, if there are less uh, you know, uh, companies willing to stay in Hong Kong or at least some of their roles or functionalities are being moved elsewhere, this would mean that there will be less jobs in Hong Kong and ultimately that would affect uh, consumer spending and other things uh, such as employment in Hong Kong. Well, thanks for that, Tommy Wu at Oxford Economics.